All right. So we have code blocks set up on our computers, and we're ready to start compiling and running programs. Um, what you'll notice is that when you um, start up a new project in code blocks, um, you'll it'll by default establish or place um, two different library headers there: standard input and um, standard I/O input and uh, input and output and standard library. There's a host of functions that are available in those two um, header files uh, that are now available to us. Um, a little bit later, I'll show you what other functions are uh, are available. But this is the basic structure of a simple C program. One thing that you will notice um, that code blocks, when it sets up your initial code, um, your, your main for your program, it doesn't uh, provide any arguments into main. Um, so what's probably more common is to see something like this established um, as the as the header for your main program where there is a variable that's an integer that stands for um, the the count argument count arg argument c for count the number of arguments that would have been passed into this function and um, argv is an array of character pointers um, or an array of strings essentially that are passed in to this main when the program first starts. So I'll say more about this header and how to use it a little bit later. Um, but I think it's a good idea that it's a good thing that um, the code blocks or the IDE, the developers have said, let's just save that for later because it just adds to the complexity. And C allows you to do quite a bit um, without and, and, and still run, actually, and have a program that still runs. For example, we can say we don't want to return anything. We can get rid of this. Um, we can probably get rid of this. And with this, if I compile it, it looks like it still compiles with some warnings. And if I run it, it will actually still run. Um, so. Um, so C allows you to do quite uh, quite a f uh, to leave out quite a few things, even if it's not um, correct. So there are some inconsistencies um, in, 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 in as far as what it allows. It's it allows you to do things that might not serve you well, um, or it'll try to make sense out of what you've done and fill in with some usable defaults. So there's your basic program. Header files, um, a main program that returns a value, typically zero for success, non-zero for failures. Um, so let's dig into this a little bit more. So the data types that you are familiar with in Java include an integer, these are the primitive data types, not classes, but integers, characters, um, floating point numbers, and doubles, which are um, double precision floating point numbers. So those are the primitives that you would have been exposed to or should have been exposed to in a, in a, prior, in a prior class. Um, there, notice that there are no Boolean data types. Um, there's not a Boolean data type in C. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, but what C, in short, what C uses for a Boolean is um, either a zero or a non-zero value. So for example, this would be considered a true. And then I'll say printf um, I'll say printf true. So if I were to run this, 
you'll see that it prints true and then hello world. If I put a slash in over here, I'll get a new line to format that a little bit better. So compile and run it and you'll see true and then hello world. If I change that to a zero, this time it should just print hello world. So anything that's zero is considered false. Anything that's non-zero is considered true. And you'll see um, effectively how um, C will use that the way that you would normally use booleans. So there is no boolean, just simply integers, characters, floats, and doubles. And then you can kind of cobble those data types together um, as either an array of these items or as um, a mixed grouping of the various items, similar to a class where you have instance variables. Um, this would be very similar to a class where you can pull together an integer, a float, um, a string-like uh, array, and put these things together to make up a data structure. For example, if you have a student who has an age, um, a GPA, which would be a float, um, first name, last name, which would be two strings, you can pull all of that together um, and make a student object in the way that you would maybe do a cl student class or student object in C. In Java, you could do something like that in C, um, with the big difference being that you don't have the methods um, or methods um, that you have available to you in a class. So a struct is very similar to a Java class with no methods. And then finally, um, we'll get into another data type um, called a pointer and it's similar to a Java reference. Um, I'll say more about that, but in brief, a, a pointer data type is declared with an asterisk after the data type. Um, and I could say, let's make up a variable name, XPT. So this data type here, XPT, is a variable that can hold an address of an integer. So I see this as a pointer to an integer, is how I read this. And that way, if I do have an integer declared, um, let's say x equals 4, and if I want to point to that, to point to it, in short, means that I'm going to hold his address. So I'll use the ampersand operator, and I'll pull in the address of x into xpt, and now I have a, um, a data type that references an object, or not references a uh, an, an integer, a primitive integer. So to actually play around with this more and look at it um, will require a bit more work, and I'll, I'll save um, that for uh, a little bit later. One thing I will do, though, is that I'll show you how you can use a pointer. Um, And so what's required to use it will mean that we'll have to really kind of look at how you would print things out. So let's talk more about printf um, before we um, are able to show you anything with a pointer. I think I want to be able to show you how to use printf. So printf is a function that exists inside of standard io.h. Um, to view um, a manual uh, or a reference to that, we're going to go to one of my favorite links, c++.com. And so let's open that up in a browser and take a look at the manual. So let's see if we can go to that link. Um, I don't know if so sure that link is working or 
So let's go to C++. Um, C++.com. The C library is the, uh, the library that we're going to use. And then notice that um, we have a list of the header files. So the one that we're looking at right now is standard IO, stdio.h. And when you look at that, um, there's a description here, input and output operations um, that are available to us. So the C++ can also use this library. We're going to use it in C. We won't use C++. And I'm going to move down to printf. And printf is here. So when I click on printf, it'll take me further down and it shows you that printf has a header that looks like this. Um, and it shows you some of the options that are available to it. And so what I'm going to do is just skip some of the, the details and go directly into an example. So printf works like this. So notice in these examples of printf um, being used here, um, the pattern is, let's zoom in on this a little bit. The pattern is that there is a string. There's a beginning quotation and an end quotation. Um, and that's what you're going to see with all of these printf statements. There's a string. And then following that string, there will be a series of other parameters that are passed into this printf function. So the way printf works, it essentially just will go to that string that it sees and it'll go through one by one and it'll print these elements out. So it'll print out the D, the E, the C, the I, M, A, L, S, colon, space. But when it sees a percent sign, it will go ahead and grab the percent sign and the next character that comes with it or following it. And they'll say, oh, I will, I see that that's a decimal or an integer. And so it'll go outside of its um, quotations and it'll take this one and it'll match it up with this and it'll try to print this out, um, these bits as an integer. Or for example, as it goes through and it sees a percent C, it'll go outside and it'll, pr it'll print this as a character. If you want to run this through c++.com. One of the things I like about it is that you see this cog over here on the right. And if I hit this edit and run, it will bring it up into a shell um, where you can actually run this. And it says characters colon, there's a lowercase a and an uppercase a. Um, it says decimals, and then it prints out those two values and so forth. Um, so let's take a look at what that, how that works here. So in my hello world, let's keep it a simple data type and I'll say um, integer x is the one we want to print out. Um, I am printing x as and then percent d a new line and then x so what this will do is it'll print the i the space the am space and it says x as percent d and then it's going to jump outside of its closing quotation mark and print the x so when i do that you should see that it will run and it will tell you I'm printing X as 4. Now, this is printing out a little bit large. I'm gonna, I'll quickly change the display here. The, the width, I'll make maybe 60. The height, 
Oh, I'm not going to change that one. Not that. The, the window size here is a 60. And the height, I'll make um, 40. Um, and let's see what that looks like. I think that'll be a little bit, a little bit better. So when I run it again, I'm printing X as 4. Now, if X, for example, is 54, and I run it, it'll say I'm printing X as 54. So this conversion specifier, whenever you see that percent sign, is we call that a conversion specifier. So it's not going to print out a percent sign. It just tells it to go outside of the quotation marks and look outside and, and uh, print whatever character, whatever number, whatever um, item it finds on the outside of those quotation marks, the first one. If I had two different items, then it would look for the next comma separated item. The one that comes after x would be x plus 1 or x plus 5. So I'm expecting it to print, let's make it 6, 54 and 60. So let's compile and run this and you'll see I'm printing and you see 54 and 60. So let's get rid of this. So now this prints 54 and 60 as integers. Um, but this number 54 is, it could mean something else. For example, if I go to my ASCII table, and if I look at my ASCII table, what you will find is that the number 54 um, is also the way we represent character 6. Let's look at a different value. Let's say the number 74 is a J, and the number 80 is used to encode a P. So J and P um, are encoded as a decimal, 74 and an 80. So 74 and 80, let's make sure we get a 74 and 80 going. And then what I'm going to do is say, all right, instead of interpreting it as an integer, um, I'm going to say interpret that value as a character. So that way, when it prints it out, you should see that it gives you a J and a P. So your printf um, really doesn't know what this data type is over here. Um, you have to tell that uh, tell your printf that this series of bits or bytes here um, should be interpreted as a character by using a percent %c or as a decimal by using a percent %d or possibly as a floating point number. Um, and I don't know what that's going to be as a floating point number. It could just be, yeah, so nothing really gets printed out there. It sees it as zero. So you have to make sure that your data type and your conversion specifier are consistent. C will allow you to be inconsistent. Um, so you have to be sure to, to protect against that. So that's our initial discussion on printf. Um, we can work with integers by using a percent %d. We can, you, we can work with characters by use, making this a percent %c. Um, we can work with floating point numbers. Um, by using a percent %f. So I'll print out a y there, and it should give me the 4.22231. Let's run it, and I get my 4.223100, and then it prints out the next one as uh, a character. And so what we've seen is that we can use printf to print out floats, characters, and integers. Um, by using F, C, and D. D is for integer or decimal. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about how we print out addresses, this other unique 
um, data type, how do we print out pointers and addresses? So we'll see that next. So that's it for the initial introduction to, uh, to, to printf and printing elements in C.